Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, you know, we're going to recap a ton of stuff put together. Um, it's, I think it's good to be viewed together in one sitting. So we're going to go that way. And we could always pick things apart uh, in smaller segments again. Because what we want to get across is the fact that, you know, we are in a matrix within a matrix. So there is the original creation, which is a benevolent thing. And it's all about growth, learning, experience. It's for us to have more physical, tangible experiences and to have something that we don't always have because we are, again, consciousness having an experience as a human, having an embodied experience. Uh, we are consciousness itself, and that aspect of us is eternal, period. And yet, we are having a unique experience as humans. And so when we look to this date, September 23rd, 2017, many people take it as just this, the sign of Revelation 12, as you see the constellation Virgo there. And September 22nd was Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. And so this was taken by, by, by some to be uh, basically the start of the tribulation period, which would again bring us to a conclusion in 2024. Now, we did have in August, uh, we had that first line of the X marks the spot, which is actually more of an Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, basically, it looks like A for anarchy. And, you know, we've covered that before in other videos, but just want to remember people again, that was in August of 2017. And it just seemed like, boom, all of a sudden we had three major hur hurricanes do devastation we had floods and, and it hasn't stopped since so many people take this as signs of the creator well again a lot of people will say well it's it's a sign from god and i don't even know if they even think of god in terms of the creator of this universe i mean again a lot of people have a, a very vague unclear picture or of, of the concept of God. What is God to you? You know, that's that's a question that you don't really even hear people put out there. They just, whatever they heard from their pastors, priests, rabbis, whatever, is what they accept that God is, unfortunately. You know, not most of the people that follow our channels <laughs> because you've done a lot deeper work and you understand uh, that that which is out in the mainstream is put out there for public consumption to create a certain mindset and paradigm. Sita. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sita's, Sita has her words to say, too. No, but I mean, for me, the word God, it was all kind of given to me. It was all spoon-fed to me. It was uh, given to me in certain portions. It was given to me in a very kind of like a methodical way to build upon other things. You know, what is God? I, I think that's really given to all of us in, in so many ways. And don't forget the, the Bible is like the number one sold book out there. And they've kept it everywhere you look. You know, I'm, I'm sure still in so many... Uh, so many hotels motels you're going to find a bible right there in that in that top drawer and you know i think that's more for consumption for the controller's ability to keep us under control and if you dare step out of that matrix well there's there's problems you know from from other people other people are going to jump on top of you so it really makes it very fearful for people to go outside and ask themselves and get the answer for themselves what is God because there's always this uh, parameter of don't don't go out there and explore this this fear ridden type of energy that does does not allow people to go find out for themselves 
Yeah, and again, so often, uh, gosh, yeah, how many people will say, I don't know, it's got to be God's will, it's not mine, what can I do to change God's will? I mean, how could I change? It's what we've been taught. It's just that simple. It's what we've been taught. After all, what really is God's will? How do you assume to know God's will? Well, you'll have people that say, well, look to God's word. Oh, and they'll point out and say that the Bible is God's word. But it's not. And that's the reality of it. It's not the creator of everything's word. It's very, very different. And people will point to, this is the fulfillment of this. This is the fulfillment of that. And we've said many, many times that what you are living in is a script. And we're watching that script, that play, play out. And it's been given to us because, again, uh, the controllers of that second matrix within the original matrix, they have this script that we are all playing out. They know timing. And they give us the timing. And they give us the prophecies. And then also you do have people that can tap into things. And, and really we all could when given the chance. If we were not always being so drugged up, dumbed up, you know, and, and toxified by the food, the water, the air, everything that we see in this system is about taking away our ability to see through the BS, you know, in reality. So this is end time dream and vision. The sign that will light up the sky signaling the rapture resurrection. Watch before September 23rd because uh, maybe you'll miss the uh, rapture is basically kind of what they're intimating. And when you look at it, you see that same, uh, well, the, the constellation of Virgo again. And you see something that says child right in the womb of Virgo. So what is that? What is that child in the womb of Virgo? Well, it turns out it's an asteroid. It's an asteroid. And in fact, there are three asteroids uh, within this constellation of significance. And at the same time, there have been many prophecies of three major impacts <clears throat> during what we might take as a tribulation from asteroids. Uh, multiple visions by different people. And in fact, our, our own guides have, have alluded to the fact that there are going to be three impacts of significance. So does this prove that the Bible is the word of God? No, it's just somebody that has the script. Yeah, or a group of people that have the script. In fact, all the secret societies uh, that run the world from the shadows, they're aware of the script to varying degrees, depending on which level of controller they are. And, and it's up to us. It's, it's up to us to decide, you know, what are we going to do with this information? Are we going to allow that to control us and have us, you know, fall under the spell of what they want us to do? Or are we going to do, I think it's our given right to come here and learn about this life, be in this construct to learn the lessons we need to learn. I don't think that there's really much use when we go to school and we learn things like how to count money, you know, how to do math. I mean, I'm sure it has its place somewhere, but it, it all kind of boils down to the ability to run the institutions of the controllers. That's really all you're being taught. You're not really being taught how to think for yourself. You're not being taught, you know, how to build a house. You're not being taught how to live. You're not being taught how to garden, you know, how to live off of a farm. Things that should be any and every being's given right and we really are. We're the only being that that is here on our planet that we have to pay to live. We don't see this with any other entity. They all live off the land. And that's that that right is not given to us. It is taken by someone else, a controlling entity, and it is driven and steered by them. And you see another asteroid here designated Yeshua. Now, remember, Umuamua, 
right? That was actually what we get was that was a reptilian ship. And they say it was an interstellar object that came in and exactly as the scientists have said what we would do in interstellar travel, if we wanted to utilize the gravity of a star for propulsion, that's exactly what it did. And it left with greater velocity than it came with. You know, this is all part of the big reveal. And again, the reality is the beings that put all this together um, to them, it's almost a joke that they're playing on the humans. Yeshu Hua. So many people uh, take that to be a reference to, again, uh, the second coming of Christ. Christ Yeshua, Yeshu Hua, inside or by the womb, getting ready to be birthed. Ah, the symbolism. And then we, uh, of course, can always take a comet as being symbolic of major changes and often major disaster and again this is just fascinating when you go deep diving into the history of comets and what's happened with certain comets because there have been outbreaks of plagues of pestilence of of quakes uh of floods i mean you've had all these things associated with comets for the history of man that we know of and so once in 400 years, prepare for a spectacular, naked eye visible, Comet Nishimura as it, years, as it nears Earth this week. Y yeah, it is. It's coming in and it looks like it is going to be naked eye visible. Its closest encounter with Earth is on Tuesday the 12th. And it's going to reach its true splendor on the 17th when it will shine its brightest. Wow, isn't that curious? So there's another sign. Signs, signs, everywhere there's signs. Rosh Hashanah, by the way, this year is going to begin on the 15th. So it's during the flight of that comet, basically. Hmm, interesting. Also, when you have those curiously named, to say the least, asteroids in the position of being in the womb of the constellation Virgo. So, you know, this is part of that quote. And she gave birth to a son, a man-child who will rule all nations with an iron scepter. And her child was caught up to God in his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where God prepared a place for her to be nourished for 1260 days. You know, again, it's Revelation 12, 5 through 6, and that's taken to be three and a half years. You know, typically people will look at the tribulation period as being seven years to uh, three and a half year segments. You know, kind of like a lead up period. And then when it really goes crazy. Now, according to the video that we were looking at, and, you know, if, if you guys are so interested, you know, check out that video. Um, they have it designated where they think that uh, the tribulation is starting at this point in time. And so that's why they are expecting uh, to be raptured out and that the tribulation will go through 2030. Agenda 2030. Okay, so there's another interesting little you know thing. Signs in the heavens. Yeah, and again... When you look closely at this, everything is astrological. Now, the controllers themselves understand the original matrix. By the way, this is the info on Asteroid Child. So it is a main belt asteroid. So this is these are taken to be parts of the object that blew up in between Mars and Jupiter, which we would call Tiamat, which of which Earth is a remnant. And, you know, again, this is what they say. But again, are these asteroids really? Just like, are all comets really just balls of ice? Is it possible that some of these are ships? Is it possible that some of these are mother ships and they are moved into place at, at the proper time? And even if they are an asteroid, they could be moved into a location uh, by the use of technology. Now, what people were thinking, this is yes, Yeshua or Yeshua. I even saw somebody said, you don't even know uh, Yeshua, you know, Jesus' is real name, Yeshua. Well, you know, again, Yeshua 
this particular asteroid, they, they name them after people that discover them officially. So this is actually Yi Shuhua. Yi's her first name and Shuhua is. So this is actually two names. She's 94. Again, she is an astronomer and, and she's the one that, you know, found that particular asteroid. Isn't it curious, though, uh, how the name has a resonance that reminds us of Yeshua, but Yi Shuhua. So the symbolism, 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 symbolism. You know, when, when we think about how often biblically uh, Jesus, Yeshua, is referred to as the Lamb of God. Lamb. What's the difference between lambs and sheep? Well, again, lambs are baby sheep that are less than a year old. At age one, they become a sheep. And it gets into the size and everything. And, you know, the the other part, meat from sheep called mutton is a bit tough and usually tastes gamey. Lamb is tender and has a d- delicate flavor. Again, what does a shepherd do? They raise the sheep. What happens to the sheep? They're slaughtered and consumed. Okay, that's not a good fate. You know, the shepherd, in the eyes of the sheep, he keeps them safe until he's ready to slaughter and consume the sheep. And we should recognize a little bit more than what we're given. Symbolism of the ram. Phoenician god Hermes was often represented, uh, again, to, you know, there's, there's always the tendency to lump all these different deities together. Some will say that Hermes is Thoth, but no, they're, they're actually different uh, consciousnesses. Uh, yeah, you know, you could group them together and say that these are symbolizing wisdom, but it's fascinating for our purpose here. Often represented as carrying a ram, Zeus, the greatest of all Greek gods, had once exhibited himself to Hercules, clad in fleece and wearing the head of a ram. Ram, ram, ram. And here they're equating that with Brahman. There are those that say uh, that Judaism does come out of the the Hindu uh, system. And again, you could look to uh, Israel, right? Jacob, that whole ladder thing, which uh, we'll talk about uh, in relation to consciousness, and then being called Israel. And Israel is Ra'el, or Isis, Ra, and El. You know, it's it's a anagram that's taken from three different um, deities. And, and again, we could see there's so much more to all these symbolism. And, and Ram symbolism, spiritual meaning of Ram. Again, Rams are male sheep, and they got horns. They got horns, yes. And really, again, Aries. Aries, you know, is where the zodiac starts, right? And it's Mars. Mars, god of war. Mars, the ram. Do you, do you see where we're going with this? You know, when I when I look into the Bible, it is very, very complex. There's a lot of information in there, and we're not saying all the information is not good, but the information put together is not from uh, just some humans getting together and writing things down. This is channeled information, but where does this channeled information come from? This channeled information comes from a place of someone who is not so human, Someone who understands the matrix of this world. Someone who understands more of what is going on and how to control our being. How to control us as human beings. They understand how we were put together. And it's not like we were put together, you know, for... (laughs) For for someone's enjoyment, you know, our bodies were... uh, you know, they were kind of hijacked. They were hijacked in a sense where someone else would know to be able to take control of them. So it's not like we got upgrades. No, we have been downgraded, given less and less and less of our natural ability so that we could be monitored, so that we can be utilized, not so that we could be a free being here like a bird, like a butterfly, and come and enjoy 
what earth has to offer. And the more I look at that, the more I see the control system. I do tend to at times get frustrated when I see other people don't see that and they're just going along like sheep, you know, going along with everyone else, going along with what they're told, only got only going with what they're told and allowing that information to dictate them and to guide them and 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 so often to really attack other people if other people don't go along with it as well instead of allowing us to be more free um, free beings to come here and experience uh, the way we did more of an indigenous type of atmosphere where we're in little or groups and helping one another along but also enjoying what this earth has to offer in a very natural sense because she has all the planet all the plants that we could ever need for any illness that we might have and there's so many chemicals now that are put into our atmosphere that poison us to such a high degree to the point where we're just we're not we're not what we are supposed to be so i cannot see that as an all loving god no, again, it, it's the creator of this universe is nothing like, and that's, is nothing like, you know, what what's portrayed uh, in the Bible and it is not even just really only the Old Testament, although the Old Testament is much, much harsher. Uh, as we were putting one up that, again, Colossians 3.22 condones slavery. There's dozens of of different verses in the Bible talking about how slaves should, you know, wholeheartedly serve their masters, their earthly masters, as well as the Lord. And then again, it, it's not how it's truly translated from the original texts as well. Everything is a distortion. What you see is really the Martian system, and the Martian uh, system came to earth and the abrahamic tradition comes from mars and again this is all about it it truly is it's about war and conquest because the system that conquered mars uh, conquered nibiru and that's actually the same system and then it has conquered the earth and so when we look at mars and we look at nibiru um you know there's a lot of similarities there they're they're planets that have seen absolute devastation when you look to again all the sumerian uh, stories which predate anything biblical by thousands and thousands of years not that they're perfect translations either again this these are the source for the most part of most of the biblical material other sources are out there as well and, and it is taken from other sources uh, besides uh, just from the sumerian Babylonian Akkadian sources but this is all designating the Mars system which is ultimately designating the Nibiru system of things as again the Nibiruans worked Mars conquered Mars and so you know there is a class system that's in effect there and the EGG were lower than those that we would term the Anunnaki uh, gods like Enlil Marduk, Ea, Enki, uh, and and on and on. And they rebelled, according to the stories. They said, we're not doing it anymore. And so human, humans were um, basically genetically altered to become uh, acceptable slaves. So what they did was they turned off a lot of DNA. They fused uh, the second chromosome. And they began a program of of dumbing down what was on Earth, disassociating what was on Earth from the Earth itself and from source in order to make a perfect slave race and also an energy and food source. And this is the reality of it. So when you see all these references, they're really references to the system on Mars which ultimately is the system on Nibiru, and then even those beings were conquered by the Draco, and ultimately that's your uh, Satan-looking being with tails and, you know, that very reptilian presence. There is so much that points to this, overwhelming. Um, There was somebody that said, oh, I saw you were looking at the NIV, 
Yeah, shouldn't you look at the King James? And I've looked at them all, all of them. I've, I've compared dozens of different versions uh, in different quotes from one to another to, to look. And and I've gone out into the pseudepigrapha, the non-canonical books. I mean, these we're talking decades of my life I studied all this stuff. Decades and decades. It goes back to... Uh, well, shoot, it goes all the way back to 1971. In reality, when I started to study the Bible, 1971. And when you get to a certain point, you know this, this is absolutely not the creator of the universe that we're talking about. This is absolutely an extraterrestrial, interdimensional story that we're, we're finding is unfolding before our very eyes. This right here, again, coming from the Sumerian stories, Enlil sent Prince Marduk. Again, Marduk was the son of Enki, who was originally named Ea, where, again, we get our Earth from. Ea, Earth. To boss Mars and to hang Anzu's body there. So, again, the way they do things is the way we do things. The system you see on Earth is the system that comes from Nibiru, and ultimately it's a draconian system. Truly, just even look up, you know, the definition of the word draconian, and they're going to say it goes back to a Roman sen uh, senator. Yeah, well, the Roman system is a draconian system, and again, it comes from them. It comes out of Sumeria, and it comes from uh, Mars, and ultimately from Nibiru. When you can look into the Bible, and you're going to see a lot of clues those days. So Joshua, now you know Moses never got his feet on the promised land. He got to go wandering in the woods, supported by manna, dropping from heaven for 40 years, according to the stories. And Joshua was the one that went in and committed genocide uh, to the people in Canaan, the Canaanites that were there, living there already. Why? Because this is what the system does. You know, how could you not see that this is the same thing that's going on with immigration and migrants today? There's no difference. You, you know, can I just also point to the our medical system and look what they're pushing off on people? This really, I, I'm too afraid to say the vocabulary word, but it starts with a G and it, it's in the Bible. And it's ongoing and it has not stopped. And this is from the same control system that has the far sight of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, something that we do not have. So in many ways, we are very blind with the exception of our DNA. If we really listen, sit and listen to that DNA, you can feel something that is not right in this system if you are brave enough and if you are ready to take a cold hard look at it because once you do take a cold hard look at it that means you have to understand and you have to start changing your own ways and we are all embedded in this system in one way shape or form we have found ourselves in this system but it's not like we were innocently put here you know for a being who wants to be nice to us and make us comfortable and in a like a little nest no no, they've put us in here and then entrapped us and then layered it with other people around us so that when we try to get out, other people tattle on other people and they get very, very angry. And, you know, I wish we would just stop and ask ourselves more often and get curious about other modalities and other belief systems. I mean, if you look at the human body and you look at things like Chinese medicine and different type of herbal medicines, there's so many things about the human body. There is no reason why anyone should be going in with a knife to cut someone up and sew them back together. That is so barbaric. And I say that's barbaric because I know it's not always needed. And if it's not always needed, that implies there's other ways. And if there's other ways, why have we not learned them? Why have we not brought this into our belief system? It's not because I don't want it. It's not because you don't want it. It's because the control system doesn't want it. Because there's no money in people that can heal themselves through natural methods and regular plants that are out in your front yard. 
So Joshua burned this town called I, and it's spelled A-I, isn't that interesting? A-I as in artificial intelligence, but it's called I. It was a town in Canaan, because again, the Israelites were a massive army. And again, you know, there's, there was a prohibition that came about about numbering people because again our, our history is a total distortion we're talking many more people were alive in these days than they let you think in fact there may have been more people on the earth in those days than there are now they won't of course let you know that but anyway he went and destroyed the town made it a desolation which which it says to this day and he hung the king of Ai on a tree until evening and at sunset he commanded that they take down the body from the tree and throw it down on the entrance to the city gate. And over it they raised a large pile of rocks which remains to this day. Interesting, when you look down below it, you see Deuteronomy 21:22. If a man has committed a sin worthy of de death and he is executed, you hang his body on a tree. Is that not the cross, huh? Well, again, we go back to the way that the Sumerians, they hung bodies too, because this is where it comes from. Where did Abraham come from? Ur of the Ch Chaldees. Where is Ur? It's in Sumeria. You know, again, and the Sumerians, when Abraham is, is says, uh, who is this speaking to me? You know, is this you, God? Yes, I am your God of your people. Because each of the different city-states, which were constantly at war with each other, had a different patron deity. And this is where we get in Deuteronomy 32.8, the Council of the Gods. You know, again, it, it's very similar to the Greek mythology where you had the Council of Nine that looked on humanity and made decisions about, you know, who to punish, who not to. Marduk's Tower of Babel, as you see a ziggurat here, a weathered ziggurat, 14th century B.C. Yeah, again, the Tower of Babel was a breakaway society. It was a society that was not being part of the system. And so it was eradicated. And when you see the history of blowing a ram's horn, the shofar, this again goes back to Mars, which ultimately is going back to Nibiru. It, it's, it's the war system. Again, how did the... Israelites handle coming into the quote-unquote promised land. They slaughtered everybody. Look at what's going on with immigration and migrants today. You know, there's a horrible slaughter that's coming very, very soon to the NATO countries. They're already in place. As you see Moses, what's depicted on his head? Horns. Horns. Moses. Horns. Again, coming out of that Mars, Nibiru, and Draco, Draconian system. And again, this is, you know, out of the Bible. They saw the faces, the face of Moses horned and were afraid to come by him. This is after he had seen the burning bush. And the bush looked like a fire, and yet it wasn't consumed. And right out of Islamic tradition, what does the jinn look like? They look like fire. And we've shown you guys a picture of one that we saw in Mississippi that ended up slaughtering what? Lambs, sheep, sheep and goats. You can't make this stuff up. And here again, depictions of Moses with his horns. Wait a minute, that looks kind of satanic, doesn't it? Satan, Saturn. Ah, uh, yeah, there's, there's so many things here. And where is Saturn right now? Saturn and Mars are having a rendezvous in the U.S.'s natal chart. We are heading into, yeah, the, some of the biggest events that we've ever seen. It, they're right in front of us now. Again, when you look at this, Zeusudra, Utnapishtim, they way predate thousands of years anything biblical. This is where these stories were taken from. And you could see, there's quotes here. The storm had swept for seven days and seven nights. The Usudra 203. Uh, for seven days, seven nights came the storm. The Atrahasis and then Gilgamesh. And then Genesis talking about sacrifices, burnt offerings. The gods smelled the savor of, of the roasting lamb. They really are partial to lamb. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, again, if the gods, and it's in the plural, that's the difference. It, it's in the plural in the Atrahasis, in the uh, Gilgamesh's story. And in Genesis, the original is in the plural too, but they just covered it up. I don't know. That just really bothers me because I'm sitting here thinking in the Bible, how often do they refer to us as the Lamb of God? You know, that really, I'm sorry, it, it just bothers me. And there's other references in there where, you know, uh, God smells burning flesh and, and it, it smelled sweet to him. I mean, where does this stuff come from and why do we adopt it? Why do we bring it in to be ours? That, I think that's a fair question for people to ask themselves. Why do you read these things? Why do you bring it into your heart and accept it? Is it because you're afraid to go out of the control grid, possibly? Is it afraid? Are you afraid that you might go against people that, other people that taught you? Maybe your parents, trusted teachers. And I think that's a legitimate reason. That's a legitimate answer. I didn't want to go outside of those people that I trusted. They were telling me these things. I, I wanted to believe that they are all good, that they are very, very kind. But in believing that they are good and kind, I ignored my own instincts when it comes to the burning flesh and how God loved the sweet smell of burning flesh. I ignored it because of the other things. But I think it's okay for us to ask these questions at this point because we can see now how much um, technology is involved in this. So many things we know now that we did not know then. Yes. And, you know, again, we're talking about the horns and we're talking about the symbolism. And I'm trying to get this closer. Okay. There we go. Baphomet. So this is Baphomet. Baphomet's got the same horns again. So, you know, this is a big, big telling. And, and what is Baphomet? It, it looks like it's a blending of male and female. And again, it has the horns, which again are depict depicting truly uh, the Mars warlike Nibiru and Draconian system. But Baphomet also is AI. Baphomet is a thought form and it is AI. And you know, again, all this goes perfectly together. It goes perfectly together. Look at the snakes. This is again, you could look at it like a caduceus. But they end over here at the solar plexus. They they end below the heart center. Now, they are truly, typically, uh, representing the Ida, Pingala, and the Shipshumna, which, again, when they're functioning properly, these nadis, these are energy centers in the body, the masculine and feminine energy centers, in the body uh, and that's how the third eye gets awakened and the third eye awakened crown chakra awakened and we can be in touch with the higher self and we could see through much of the the lies of the illusion so this is depicting that not working the third eye not working again fluoride in in the water calcification of the pineal everything about the system is keeping humans in a lower state and the Ida Pingala and Shashumna terminate way before they normally do, naturally do. This is, again, you know, a depiction that's showing that humanity will be kept in a lower state. And again, they, they are serving that thought form. And when we get down to even uh, Yahweh, which is really now a thought form again, Yahweh Jehovah is really at this point in time, it, it's a useful thought form to gather energy for them to harvest. Oh, there's that word. Uh, now I'm going to really trigger her. But let's go back. I mean, as we were talking about, we were saying how when you looked to the Sumerian, it was gods in the plural. And we see this is Moro uh, Bellino, and he is a Vatican translator. And he, he, he says Elohim's plural. You don't translate it as God. It's gods. It's really mighty ones, powerful ones. It's really those that again come from the sky. It's totally erroneous. It's deceptive, purposely so. This is the whole point. You know, the Bible is not really talking about the creator. No, it's the usurpers. 
When you look to Codex Sinaiticus, which is the oldest full copy we have uh, of, of the Bible, it's interesting that, you know, they'll say that it's, it comes from about 400 A.D. It comes from after the Council of Nicaea and the other councils, which again were initiated by the Roman Emperor who was pagan. And it was initiated partially to consolidate the emperor, empire and to keep power. And again, this was the Emperor Constantine. And no, I won't call him great because it offends some people. Uh, yeah, he was, he was great in the same way Columbus was great. And they credit Columbus with discovering the Americas. Really, he just opened up a whole new uh, two continents uh, for plunder and genocide. And yet he celebrated. So is Constantine celebrated. All that he did was really consolidate power and, and gave the people a new singular form of Christianity in which, you know, you accepted it, otherwise you were a heretic and you would be executed. Just that simple. And so the Gnostics, you know, didn't believe uh, in in the Constantinian vision and then they were persecuted. Many people lost their lives, you know, boiled alive, etc., drawn and quartered. Yeah, and this is where the Bible that we have comes out of. It comes out of these councils. Sure, there was the Protestant Reformation, but they're still accepting basically the same translations, which are wrong. They're erroneous. And in fact, this is Morrow, by the way. I'll give you links to his website. He's not the only one. Um, Paul Wallace has, has done uh, numerous interviews with him and others. He was a, a former priest who you know, recognized the deeper you go, then you, you cannot take the... Bible from a fundamentalist point of view. It just doesn't make sense. It makes no sense at all. And that's when you also can realize that uh, it's a tool. It's completely a tool. So, you know, what are, what is the Masoretic text? Most Jews and Protestants consider the Masoretic text the authoritative Hebrew Bible. Protestants call it the Old Testament. While it was written sometime between the 7th and 10th centuries A.D. Wait a minute, 7th and 10th centuries A.D.? It was based on oral traditions and the best available manuscripts of the original Hebrew. Again, that codex that we were talking about, um, that is actually uh, in Greek. So, you know, you have Aramaic, which was the the language of the land, and a lot of texts uh, are in Greek. And, you know, again, you have translation from one language to another to another, and then finally to English. And again, there was a lot of problems with this. A lot of problems with this, because there were so many different translations, because they didn't use vowels. Vowels contain too much power to put in there, so they basically used notation marks, like jots and tittles, to tell you where there is a vowel. But they didn't tell you which vowel. So what happened? With no vowels, punctuation, or stress marks, the original Hebrew left a lot of room for interpretive errors. Anybody that says the Bible is the authoritative, complete, perfect word of God is totally lost has not a single clue, totally lost. Be because there's just hundreds <laughs> of, of translative errors. It's, it's accepted by the scholars. And when you're talking again about that Codex Sinaiticus, which is the oldest, it is so marked up. You could, you could well, go look for yourself. It, it, it has so many different um, Corrections. The Sumerian uh, cuneiform Zi-ud-sura. And now this is interesting. Zi-ud-sura. Noah. And, you know, it's interesting because Noah in the Eridu Genesis, in, in, in the Sumerian stories, becomes an immortal. That's interesting because, again, they grant him this. In fact, he becomes an Ajiji. And when we see that last part, Sora, that is so reminiscent of the demonic beings in the, in the Vedic tradition, the Asuras, who are going against the Devas. Ya Devi. 
And when we take a look at our English word devil, what they've done is taken the good guys and made them the bad guys because the root of that word Davy, devil, de Devi, is actually the good guys from the Hindu tradition, the ones that are benevolent, that help humanity, that teach humanity that God's source is in you. And then you could look to Revelation, says, when will the end come? It will come when man sins and sits in the temple of God saying that he is God. That's self-realization. So again, this is the system saying, no, 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 you're all slaves. And this is, again, part of the big reveal. So we can all say, well, we can all have different beliefs. Y yeah, but there's much more darkness to this than we've ever really told you guys, uh, which we will in, in upcoming videos as we're still, you know, uncovering um, parts of this and coming to realizations at the same time. So beside that Masoretic text, you have the Eloist, which El is where in Hebrew uh, you originally saw Elohim uh, and El in the singular. Elohim is the plural gods, you know, and uh, you have also the Yah, uh, the Yahweh's text. So they're different narratives, and, and yeah, they, they do actually contradict. As you could see this website, Contradictions in the Bible, there's tons of them. There's tons of them. You know, uh, we could spend eons going through them all. So, you know, again, the use of the word Yahweh uh, is, is where things got very, very twisted. Because, again, they wanted to take what was known to be a plural. They don't want you, to, you know, understanding that there's more than one because then you're like everybody else, right? You're like any other quote unquote pagan. But Yahweh, who they say is the only creator, according to the Yahweh's tradition, had a consort, a counterpart, Asherah. And, you know, Yahweh here is depicted as looking pretty powerful and uh, muscular, but this is what he really looked like according to the drawings. Well, he was certainly masculine. We will give him that. We will, we will give him that, you know, and, and, and yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that are going on here in the world that we live in, the world that we live in modern right now, today, when, you know, I'll go back to that vocabulary word for just a moment but for me it's very upsetting and I, I think it needs its own own video but the word the word harvest the word harvest the word rapture this really revolves around some pretty dark stuff that you know Mike is brilliant he's been reading the Bible has written the Bible since he was a child so he has this stuff he has all this data in his data banks and me on the other hand I feel these energies so I feel into them and I also read my own DNA and I know where I have been in this world and I know what has been done one cycle after the next and I am here I, I have this passion to really awaken people because I know how critical it is that we awaken and we have our own self-realization as to who we are if we get stuck in this belief system you literally are you're stepping into kind of a vortex and you're allowing yourself to be taken harvested and it, it's not just that simple either there is a lot of information around it that is really so quite upsetting i was able to talk about it some in in the truck today but not without a lot of fears tears and not without a lot of anger so we will put that together but just please understand that this there's a passion there's purpose behind us trying to help people find themselves trying to get people to understand this book this controlling book goes far deeper than people realize <laughs> and it's intended to do that it's intended to just have people skim along the top and only take in that little bit of information and not go deeper and then if you do go deeper, there's going to be nothing but contradictions. So it's also made to confuse. But I can read inside of that DNA, and I know what they're doing. The Dead Sea Scrolls are the oldest um, partial, for the most part, partial pieces that we have of the Old Testament there. 
And, you know, at best, at the, at the oldest, perhaps between 1 and 200 B.C., these right here, like that Gaza coin of Asherah and Yahweh, is dated 538 to 323 B.C. You have uh, sayings that come from 830 to 760 B.C. I have blessed you by Yahweh of Samaria and his Asherah. Uh, you know, there's multiple seals of this, Hebrew seal of Asherah and Yahweh, because Yahweh had a wife, 720 uh, to 600 B.C. So again, they wiped this all out they, they, because they wanted to make a monotheistic version. But this isn't the original version. The original version isn't monotheism. No, th what you're talking about is you're talking about these beings that we know as the Gigi and the Anunnaki and their offspring because, again, they had children with those that were here. So, you know, again, so many people have such a distorted view of all this. And, and it's understandable because th these are very, very intelligent beings that have done this in more places than just Earth. It, this is the great reveal. And, you know, again, the, the Abrahamic tradition is the draconian tradition. There are nuggets in there, but you can get any nugget that's in there elsewhere without all the system encoding it. So, I mean, if you study uh, Taoist texts, for instance, you will find non-religious, basically, texts um, telling you much of the secrets of how things really, really work. And you could also go into the Vedic uh, texts and they'll talk to you and, and you'll, you'll learn outright about the wars of these gods that happened. You know, so the dark system that we have was brought to us from Mars. So all these depictions when you're seeing, you know, Moses with the horns and they're talking about the Lamb of God, you know, and of course the fundamentalist thing is, well, that's, you know, God came and incarnated in order to fulfill his own will that there has to be a blood sacrifice. But when you say that you believe in blood sacrifice, then they say, okay, so you're going to have more war because you condone blood sacrifice. So karmically, we, we can, you know, dress you up as a sacrifice in your little uniforms and march you off to kill each other. And that energy does feed certain beings. Yeah, it's the demons that have given you the Abrahamic tradition. It's pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. It's pretty hard hitting. And, and there's, there's more to it. And I'm surprised we've made it this long. I'm very grateful for this. So um <laughs> take take this information find yourself understand who you are and how important your sovereignty is absolutely because truly god is within you and the ultimate source of all is love and we go in deeper into how could that possibly be on heart's own uh where we uncover more of the mysteries of of the true reality that we find ourselves in because, again, we're consciousness and we're having a temporary experience. Ah, but the controllers want to control that consciousness for eternity. And that's the tale of another tale, which we will elaborate on in the future. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.